Newton's Laws. In 1687, Isaac Newton published the Principia. This detailed his ability to predict motion, describe causes of motion, and how to maintain motion. As we'll see later in the year, he also made additional contributions to light and optics and was credited with inventing calculus. Let's learn more about his three laws. Newton's first law, the law of inertia. Newton's first law states that an object in motion will remain in motion until acted upon by an outside force. Or similarly, an object at rest will remain at rest until acted upon by an outside force. An object's ability to resist this change in state of motion is called its inertia. Here we see a tricycle and a Mack truck. Both of them are at rest. Both of them will stay at rest until acted upon by an outside force. But which one will stay at rest more than the other? Otherwise, which one has a larger inertia and re will be resistant to changing its state of motion from at rest to in motion? If we try to push the Mack truck, we see it is very resistant to being moved. It has a large inertia. But if we try to push the tricycle, the tricycle changes its state of motion from at rest to in motion and therefore has a lower amount of inertia. Similarly, if the tricycle is in motion, how much will it want to stay in motion compared to the Mack truck? If the Mack truck is in motion, how much will it want to stay in motion? Let's say both of these were in motion towards a brick wall. Well, as you can see, as the tricycle hits a brick wall, it'll be stopped. But what about the Mack truck? It has so much inertia as it goes and hits the brick wall that it can go right through that brick wall because of its high inertia. It's in motion and it really wants to stay in motion. Well, how do we quantify inertia? Otherwise, how much more inertia does the Mack truck have than the tricycle? This brings us to the concept of mass. And mass is measured in the units of kilograms, as we'll use later in problem solving. Newton's second law. Previously, we learned that acceleration is defined as a change in velocity over time. But what produces that acceleration? Well, Newton answered that as force. He said in his famous equation that force produces a mass to accelerate. A rearrangement of that shows that acceleration is directly proportional to force. The bigger the force on the mass, the more acceleration and inversely proportional to mass. For the same force, the larger mass will accelerate at a lower rate. Let's take a look at this cargo box right here. If we apply a small force to the box, it will accelerate at a low rate. If we apply a bigger force to the box, it's going to accelerate at a much higher rate. That is, force produces acceleration. In this equation, the units of force are defined as the Newton named after Sir Isaac. The units of mass are the kilogram, as we just learned in the last one, and our units of acceleration are still meters per second squared. That is, one kilogram accelerating at a rate of one meter per second squared is a force of one Newton. Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Or as I like to think of it, for every action force, there is an equal and opposite reaction force. Forces exist in pairs. Let's take a look at some examples. Here we see a tennis ball sitting on a tennis court. The tennis ball exerts a force downward onto the court, and in turn, the court exerts an equal and opposite force on the tennis ball. That is, each one pushes on each other. Let's take a look at this one of kicking a soccer ball. As the foot applies a force on the soccer ball this way, the soccer ball pushes the foot backwards with an equal and opposite force. Notice these vectors in these examples are the same magnitude but in different directions. What about this third one, the hammer hitting the nail? Well, the hammer exerts a force downward on the nail and in turn the nail exerts an equal and opposite force back up on the hammer. There's an age-old physics example of a horse pulling a cart. And that example suggests that to get the cart to move, the horse must pull on the cart. But physicists would say, but doesn't the cart pull back on the horse? Otherwise, how would the horse be able to pull the cart? Well, if we look at the forces, the horse does exert a force on the cart in this direction. The reaction to that force is the cart pulling back on the horse. But how then does the horse get the cart to move? 
Well, the horse actually pushes on the ground. So we can see as the horse pushes back on the ground with a force, the ground will then push the horse and whatever it's carrying forward and accelerating them to the right. Thank you for watching and see you in class.